All right. Last week I did a video about the best Japan exclusive platformers for every retro console. So this week I'll be getting into shooters. In case you missed the last video, I'm choosing a game for each retro console, starting from the Famicom up to the PlayStation 1. HU cards and PC Engine CDs get their own category, and there will be no Sega CD entry. Getting straight into it, the best shooter on the Famicom that was never released in the West was... Crisis Force. This was a very easy choice because we got almost every other good shooter on the system. Gunnek, Zaynak, Final Mission, even Zombie Nation. Crisis Force is a vertical shooter that is much faster paced than most of Konami's other shooters, like Radius or Salamander. There are two weapons you can choose from, and each has several formats you can switch between with the second button for areas where you need to shoot behind your ship or toward the side. The game has background animation, big bosses, and everything you would expect from a Konami game when they were in their prime. I do feel a little bad about awarding both the best shooter and platformer to Konami games, but they earned it. I have a feeling some people will disagree with my choice for the best Japan-only PC Engine shooter. I'm going with... Psycho Chaser. A vertical shooter where you control a robot that can switch between four different weapons at will. You can power up the weapons at the end of each level, depending on how many power-up items you collected, sort of like Guardian Heroes on the Saturn. It's not extremely long or difficult, and in fact the ending screen reveals the game was made by a very small team but I love games that require you to choose the right weapon for the right situation on the fly. And Psycho Chaser's graphics and music pull me into the alternate universe it depicts. I know, technically speaking, Final Soldier is better. But since that game's a sequel in a franchise, I'm giving this spot to Psycho Chaser, seeing as it gives us something totally new. As for the PC Engine, there are a number of excellent shooters that stayed in Japan, but my personal favorite is Seirei Senshi Spriggan by Compile. The game is very much a continuation of their Alesta series, but this one introduced a story borrowed from a somewhat obscure comic series of the same name. It didn't affect the gameplay much, to be honest. Spriggan is very similar to Musha Alesta on the Sega Genesis in both graphics and gameplay. What makes the game unique is the power-up system. There are four different colors of power-up items. You can hold up to three of them and different combinations of colors will give you different weapons. As in many compile shooters, none of the weapons are overpowered, so you've got to find the one that works for your playstyle. There was also a sequel called Spriggan Mark II, another top-class shooter which changed to the horizontal view, but if I must choose, I'll take the fast-paced, frantic gameplay of the first one. As I said in the last video, we were lucky enough to get most of the great Sega Mega Drive games in English but there was one magnificent shooter that got passed over. Grey Lancer. It was developed by Masaya, who gave us one other excellent shooter on the Genesis, Wings of War. Grey Lancer has a whopping 11 levels, and every one of them is well thought out with unique environments and oftentimes multi-directional scrolling. Your ship has two sub-devices that act differently depending on which setting you select at the options screen. You can choose for them to follow you around, spin around you, or even home in on enemies. The soundtrack is also very triumphant, the way a space opera should be. Unfortunately, it is quite expensive. A complete copy is around $300, but it's absolutely one of the best shooters on a system with a ton of shooters. Next up is the Super Famicom, and the title of Best Japan Exclusive Shooter goes to... Spriggan Powered. Yes, another game with the Spriggan name. Naxat had published Compile's Spriggan games for the PC Engine, but they made a point of it to let potential customers know that they themselves had developed this game by putting it in print on the game box. It actually says this game was developed and programmed by Naxat. Although I've seen pictures of a phone card for the game that may have been some kind of prize and it had Compile's name on it, so I can't help but wonder if maybe they had a hand in it. Spriggan Powered is a horizontal shooter with you playing as a mech, shooting down other mechs. Nothing new there. There are a few different weapons you can pick up, but the feature to the gameplay is a shield that can be activated to make you invincible to bullets for however long you hold down the button. Of course, it drains your special attack meter pretty quickly, which you'll probably want to save for using special charge attacks against bosses. But you can also refill it by killing enemies and picking up point items, so if you're in danger, there's no need to be stingy with the shield. The game doesn't exactly do anything revolutionary, but it's fast-paced, 
hard but fair, and the soundtrack is freaking legendary. The music in level 2 is in my top 10 best game songs ever. And the title for the best Japan exclusive shooter on the Sega Saturn goes to... Radiant Silver Gun. Yeah, sorry about that. Everybody already knows about this game. It's one of the best shooters of all time. Period. There's nothing I can say about it that hasn't already been said. Which brings us to the final game on this list. The Sega Saturn is known as being the go-to system when it comes to 2D shooters, but what about the PlayStation? Although we missed out on most of them in Western territories, the PS actually has a decent number of shooters in Japan. And the best shooter is... Not Harmful Park? Not Gaia Seed? It's... Zanak Neo. The game is contained in a compilation called Zanak Cross Zanak, which contains the original Zanak game from the MSX, as well as the NES port. The real feature is the brand new Zanak Neo, which is essentially a sequel. You have three ships to choose from, all of which can collect eight different sub-weapons. These can range from shields, to lock-on explosives, to arcing missiles, and almost all of the sub-weapons vary greatly between the three ships. The replay value is super high with this game, as using a different sub-weapon will completely change the way you play. In addition, this is the first shooter with music by Ko Hayashi and Daisuke Nagata, who went on to do the soundtracks for Milestone's shooters like Chaos Field and Radio Allergy. Needless to say, it kicks ass. Of course, none of these things matter if the game design isn't up to par, and Zanak Neo is fast-paced, engaging, full of cool bosses, and will put your thumbs to the test. If I was going to be on a deserted island with only five games, Zanak Neo would almost certainly be one of them. This was a topic I had wanted to tackle for quite a while, and I tried to approach it as objectively as possible, but of course, my own personal opinions crept in as well. I would definitely like to hear what other gamers thought of my choices, including those who disagree, so tell me what you thought in the comments. That's going to be all for this episode. If you enjoyed it, please do subscribe. And as always, demand the best. <laughs>